Hello, this is Kat at the Upcycled Cat Channel. Welcome. Today I am going to be upcycling this jacket. Beautiful jacket that I found at the Goodwill. And I'm going to be using this to upcycle it. And this is a pillowcase that I got at the Goodwill bins. Isn't it gorgeous? So join me. Let's have some creative fun. So of course, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tear this apart at the seams. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with the inside here. Now, somebody started upcycling this. Obviously, they did this gorgeous, gorgeous bleach effect on it. And then they added these beautiful studs, except that the inside doesn't look so great. They're just, um, they were just tacked down using these little, I don't even know what these are, but I know that these will damage your shirts when you wear this on top of a shirt. So I am going to cover this up with some fabric just so that it protects the clothing. I have cut this out and I really like this top part here, but this seems a little bit empty. It's really beautiful design, but I want to add something to it. So I have this beautiful piece of fabric and I've applied heat and bond to the back. And my idea is to cut out the word love and apply it here. So I have cut this down a little bit more to fit within this area that I want to put this in. And I am not going to look for letters on the internet or anything. I'm just going to hand do this. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to cut these into four blocks of equal size. And those are going to be my letters. L-O-V-E. This didn't turn out so well. First of all, I started with the L and did it the wrong way because I drew the L in the background. So when I turned it over, the L was backwards. Silly moi. And now that I've got three of the letters cut out, it's just kind of, uh, I don't know, it's not standing out. It's, I think it's getting lost in the background. Here's another idea. Turn this so that these are on the bottom and this big empty space is on the top. And then putting big letters there. Little heart here. I don't know. Just another idea. Maybe I just need to take a marker and outline them once I iron them down. Look what I found. I'm sure that I've shown this to you before. Look at how glittery and sparkly that is. Sparkle alert! Sparkle alert! I live for sparkly stuff. I must have been a crow in a previous life. So anyway, I have tons of this stuff and I use it in lots of projects. It's actually a shower curtain. Found it at the Goodwill bins. Waste not, want not. You know how that goes. So, I've decided I'm going to take a piece of that and heat bond it over this and the design will still come through it'll still look beautiful but it adds a layer of sparkliness and then the letters will be able to be much more visible and I'm really really excited about this really excited and I just did a test run of the heat and bond this is for the light fabrics and you can tell the difference. 
because the heat and bond for light fabrics has a white backing and the heat and bond for dark fabrics has a black backing. So I did this test to see, just to make sure that it would look good, that I'd be able to see through to the bottom and it looks great. I'm really excited with the way this looks. This is gonna be beautiful. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna apply this heat and bond right here and my iron is hot. Everything's ready to go. Okay, it's cooled off. So I'm going to remove this backing here. And that leaves the shiny glue area. And now all I have to do is lay this right on top. And then I'm going to lay this down to protect that fabric. And I just want to make sure that it's not getting stuck onto this one. So I'm just going to pull that away just to make sure. And now I'm going to do it again. I'll let that let that cool down. I did a little test strip. This one was applied with the heat and bond for light fabrics, and I think it's brighter. This one was applied with the heat and bond for dark fabrics, and I don't know if you can really tell the difference on the screen, but in person, this is. A little bit darker than this. I'm I'm new to using heat and bond so I'm still trying to figure out um, how it works and the best way to use it. That was just something I thought you'd be interested in seeing. Okay I've decided that I'm gonna use this really shimmery fabric and apply it to the cuffs here. And I've already applied the heat and bond to it. And make sure that you use the heat and bond for light fabrics when you're doing something like this that is translucent and is going to show through. So I have the heat and bond applied. And it's kind of tricky to do sleeves. So turn your sleeve inside out and that will allow it to lay a little bit more flat. And then of course, apply, apply your your protective layer. And just let that sit for eight seconds or so. And then move to the next area. Gently Oh crap, that was the one with the pink in it. Okay, I'm going to put a... Oh crap, okay. I ruined that a little bit, and I think I'm just going to put a tiny heart over it. And call it good, you know? Because when you make little tiny mistakes like this, you can always fix it by applying another layer of something. After all, this is art we're creating here, wearable art, something that is uniquely you and personal. And a little bit of that piece hasn't been tacked on yet. Here we go. And then I'll just cut a slit through there. 
and it needs to be secured a little bit more so I'm going to go over it one more just really quickly and really lightly with the iron. Because this stuff is very delicate and very heat sensitive so you don't want to put too much heat on it for too long. And by this stuff I'm not talking about the heat and bond although I think that's true for that too but I'm talking specifically about this fabric which is very delicate fabric. And then just do the fingernail test and that one is done. And then I'm going to do the other side. Okay, I am ready to lay this down. I have got it all right how I want it. I'm going to use E6000 and I'm going to start at the top. This is all glued down now and next I'm going to add this really beautiful border and I'm going to glue it down with liquid stitch and I already did a test run and the little test strip ended up looking really good. This is the test strip and there's no staining whatsoever. So this is going to be the perfect glue for this particular project. to glue the rest of them down. Wow, I'm, uh, I must be really spacey today. I forgot to hit the play button on my video when I was, when I was working on this. So, bummer, let me just tell you what I did. I cut out a piece of fabric to fit inside of here because these insides were just awful as you've seen in the previous part of this video. And then I took strips of heat and bond and I just applied them along here before the fabric was glued in here. I applied heat bond to the wrong side, ironed it on, uh, took off the little strips after it cooled, laid it down here, and then applied the heat and bond. Or should I say, applied the heat to the heat and bond. So I did that with both sides and that's an easy fix. And then just make sure you've got all the edges because that's what we're really going for here is just tacking down those edges and leaving the inside, the center part, free. Now if I had glue, if I had ironed down the whole thing, it'd, it'd be really tight, but you'd see all these little lumps in there and I thought it'd just be better to just have it a little bit free form, just tack down around the edges. So, sorry you didn't see me putting that in place, but it's it's an easy, it's a very easy fix. Next, I am going to add these to the pocket, these pretty little things. I'm not going to add it to the whole pocket because I like these seams and I want to keep them free. So I just made it small enough to fit within those seams and the pocket itself. And I'm going to use the heat and bond for light fabrics to do that. And of course that's for the 
the button right there. Okay, this is ready to go down. And last time I did this, some glue grabbed the purple off of this and got it on this. So I am going to put a piece of white fabric under that just to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And then I'm not going to press it down for too long. I just want it to have a slight hold. And then make sure you pull it off right away because this is so sheer that the glue goes through it and gets stuck on the other fabric, which is why there ended up being a bunch of purple on the last one I did. Okay, so let that dry. Or let that dry. Let that cool down. And then peel the backing away. Line it up where you want it to lay permanently. Okay, and then you're going to need your, your top protective layer. Make sure you get into those little areas. And now I'm going to do the other side. And voila, we are done. Okay, let's take a look at what we've done. We created this whole beautiful back panel. We've got this gorgeous border. Everything is laid in. Everything is shimmery and beautiful. Look at that. I love the way that that turned out. And then on this side, we added, we, I, I added these. And these look really beautiful. I like the way that these turned out as well. And then here are the cups. So there's that jacket. That was a quick upcycle, really easy to do. Oops, I forgot to show you the inside. We also covered up these bizarre thumbnails. They're, they're also like a thumbtacks or something. We covered those up. And we now have a gorgeous upcycled art jacket like and subscribe hit the notification bell i release videos every wednesday evenings and every sunday mornings so come back and see what else we've got in store as far as upcycling thrift finds i hope you have a fun creative week see you later